See, a lot of times the feelings inside of us are quite negative. Right? And if we followed them, what would happen? Yeah, how many of you felt like murdering someone this week? Nobody. Not this week. Last week, last week there were a <laughs> Fortnightly thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only every payday. <laughs> yeah, quite often we will have a desire that is negative. Very true. Now, when we have a desire that is negative, what do we do with it? Now, if we follow just our emotions under those circumstances, then obviously we would probably act on that emotion and do something very negative, which would actually harm our soul again. But what we need to do, if we are fully choosing, if we are humble, what we will do is we will feel that emotion. Oh, I feel like killing Joe Blow. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what emotion is underneath that that I don't want to feel. What emotion inside of me is underneath that that I don't want to feel. Oh, well, he just stole my million dollars that I had in my bank. And now I'm destitute. Hmm. <laughs> what emotion did that bring up for me? What emotion did it bring up for you? He stole all of your money. Fear. Okay, so fear. Anger, but these are not emotions. These are capping emotions. What's underneath those? Rage is another capping. Insecurity. Insecurity. I'm unsafe. And I don't want to feel unsafe. So in order to not feel unsafe, what am I willing to do? Get angry. And in order to... And then I feel really angry. I feel, in fact, in a rage. So I'm willing now to even consider murdering the person. Right? Why? Because I wasn't humble enough to feel the underlying emotion. So when I say feel the emotions. What I'm actually talking about is feeling the causal emotion, not feeling the effect-based emotions. And we'll deal with this more in a minute. Do you understand the difference between a causal emotion and an effect emotion? An effect emotion is anger or fear. They are all effects. They are not the real reason why you're feeling what you're feeling. They are just the reasons that you select in order to not feel the underlying emotion. They are the choices you make so that you don't have to feel the underlying emotion which is even more difficult for you to feel. Do you follow me? So, in the case, all of my money has been stolen. I'm feeling fear that that's not the real emotion. Right? The real emotion is actually underneath the fear. I'm feeling anger, but that's not the real emotion. The real emotion is underneath the anger. That's the emotion I need to let myself feel. And I choose anger, and I choose fear, and I choose these other things in order to not feel the underlying emotion, the causal emotion, the core emotion that created these other feelings. So when I'm talking about becoming soul dominant, I'm saying don't do those things, because those things are actually the mind choosing to deny the underlying emotion. When you no longer deny the underlying emotion, whatever that is, then those emotions will not come up in you. So, uh, one day this week, I think it was about Wednesday, yeah, I was feeling quite angry Wednesday. And uh, with, for me, anger is sort of like a brief thing, like a few minutes and... Normally, you know, I usually just sit down straight away and then just look at what's going on inside of me. Why am I feeling this anger? And, and what came up for me was uh, I was angry with my soulmate. I was angry with my girl about something she did in the first century, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, for me with my emotions, what's happening is every time I have memories, it's like the thing happened yesterday. Yes. You follow me? So it's a bit like if you're an abuse survivor and all of a sudden 
you have a memory of the abuse that you survived when you were younger. It's like that memory, it's like that abuse happened yesterday to you. That's how it feels. Like it's a very strong, powerful emotion. So even, my, I know it sounds funny, but even my first century emotions feel like they happened yesterday. And what happened in the first century was my soulmate did cheat on me. Right? We were together and she left. And, um, and I was just feeling lots and lots of uh, anger about that. And I sat down and had to look at what I don't want to feel. I was feeling jealous anger. And, uh, and a bit of sexual sort of anger as well, you know, like sexual jealousy. And I, I was trying to, you know, initially I just got into the anger and I was... <laughs> and I've got a 40 acre property and I, I was uh, pulling out a mother of millions, you know, <laughs> scourge of this land. And, uh, and I'm still trying to work out, God must have created it for some reason, I'm still trying to work out. <laughs> That's a different story. Um, <laughs> anyway, I started... I'm pulling out his mother of millions, you know, grumbling to myself and being upset about my soulmate cheating on me in the first century. <laughs> Why you'll find it so funny? It wasn't funny. It wasn't. Anyway, I allowed myself to go into the underlying emotions, and um, a lot of them come up like being unwanted, undesirable. You know, all of these feelings about that I was feeling about myself now. Mm. Which, by the way, I didn't feel in the first century. But because of these reflected emotions through my mother's injuries this time around, I, had all, I have all of these emotions now based on those memories. And so I was feeling unloved, undesirable, unwanted, uh, and, and quite a number of other things which I finished up trying to connect to. And I'm still trying to connect to. Does that make sense? The jealousy and the anger were just suppressing what was underneath. Right? And I didn't want to go what was underneath because it felt too painful. So at that moment was I fully choosing to be humble? No. I can only be, when I'm humble, I will feel the underlying causal emotion. The one that I'm trying to avoid with my anger. Hey Jane, are you trying to get back to the event in, in this childhood that made you feel like that, or are you just connecting with the feeling? And in the end, if you connect with the feeling, you will probably always get back to the event. But, but connect to the feeling. Um, any of you who have survived childhood abuse, particularly sexual abuse, would know that you blocked out many of your memories. You repressed them, right? <coughs> Why did you repress them? Because you didn't want to feel the emotional attachment to that memory. So what often happens is we have an event that occurs that creates an emotion. We don't want to feel that emotion, so we tune out of that emotion. And that also means that the event is no longer remembered either. We repress it. Right? And this is what all of us do with emotions that we don't want to feel. We finish up going into states of denial. And there's lots of different states of denial, and I'll list a few. I brought, I got a few little quotes, actually, from the Homecoming book that have helped me a lot. And, uh, and I'll list some of those things for you, too, that might help you. Well, I don't quite understand what you said about you, you, your emotions, because you've experienced from your mother's emotions, now you're feeling the betrayal in the first century. It's just... All right, let's, look, let's just answer briefly, the, oh, I've answered this before, but let's answer it briefly. Um, your soul contains memories. When you get into a 20 second sphere condition, those memories remain in your soul, but they are not emotional. They are just events. <coughs> that make sense? When you incarnate... The biggest amount you can incarnate into the womb of your mum, right? And your dad is in your life too, obviously. And those emotions together, once you incarnate, are impressed upon, you're in there, right? They're impressed upon your soul. And every one of those memories then take on an emotional perspective. Based on the emotions that your mother and your father both feel. You follow me? 
that's what happens when you reincarnate. So this is why reincarnation is not very good if you want to clear away. Like, this why, and, and honestly, <coughs> most uh, Eastern religions say that reincarnation is necess necessary for clearing karma. The truth is that if reincarnation was necessary for clearing karma, no single person on earth would ever get cleared, or in the spirit world would ever get cleared of all the damage. <coughs> In the spirit world, people progress from one sphere to the next sphere to the next sphere to the next sphere, and they don't come back to earth to do that. And the reason why they can do that is because they can clear away their karma as they progress in the spirit world. So there is no need to reincarnate for the purpose of clearing away old baggage. You follow me? Yep. Why do we take on do we take on um, parents or impress their emotions impressed on child? <coughs> Um, so that you can help and them feel their feelings? Well, let's, let's look how God firstly created it. God firstly created it so the parents had no emotional baggage. Now, if the parents have no emotional baggage, when the child incarnates, the child will have no emotional baggage. Now, that'd be great, wouldn't it? You would have no problems going through your life. You'd be happy from the moment you were born. You wouldn't be born crying. Do you think you'd be born crying? Of course not. Right? You'd be born smiling. Yeah? And your whole life would be a joyous experience, right? Now, God created it that way, but what man has done is made a choice to walk away from God. And in that choice, what we do is we become self-reliant. And in the choice of becoming self-reliant, we then choose a lot of things that are disharmonious with love. And in the process of that, every one of those disharmonies with love becomes a part of our emotional being. So my mum, and her mum, and her mum, and her mum, and I'm not just saying mum, my mum and dad, and her mum, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents, and their parents, have passed down, if you like, this constant emotional baggage onto each subsequent generation. That's not what God intended to do, to happen. But God knew it could happen if a person walked away from God. And as we walk closer to God, this will not happen. And in the future, in around, you know, probably around 100 years or so time, there will be lots and lots and lots. In fact, the majority of people on earth being born will not have emotional damage. 